what should I do so that my garments are actually wearable when I'm done sewing them and so that they actually look good and professional? Any advice? So to make a good wearable garment that will make you proud and will look really good, polished and professional, I think that everybody has their own little set of rules, ideas, tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call it. But I do think that these 10 sewing principles are a good place where to start in order for you to achieve that beautiful handmade garment that really makes you proud. So today let's dive a little deeper into these 10 sewing principles that I follow every time I sew and I hope they'll help you as well. So let's get started. Now these are in no particular order, but I would suggest for you to get started with washing your fabric before you begin your project because some of the fabrics that are made from natural fibers will shrink after wash and you definitely don't want that result. When you've made a garment that fits perfectly, then you throw it in the wash and then it comes out a size, sometimes even a size and a half or two sizes smaller than intended. Definitely a waste of time, waste of fabric, wasted energy and you don't want that. Pressing your garment as you assemble your sewing project will also help you to make it look professional and crisp. Not only that, but it also will help you in the process as well, especially when you work with fibers that press really well, when we talk about hemming the garment or adding any other details to it. When you press them really well, then it eliminates the need or the major need of pinning everything together because then everything is pressed really nice and neat and you don't have to pin it as much which always makes it for an easier assembly and smoother feeding through the sewing machine. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Project Runway and there was one episode when one of the finalists, Michelle Lesniak, actually did ask Isaac Mizrahi years ago before she even was on Project Runway and the question was what makes a homemade garment look fantastic and professional and he answered to her in the letter that pressing the garment makes all the difference. So definitely don't skip that step because it really does make a difference. I think another really good point that will get you a really good wearable garment that fits you right and looks really good is to never trust the sizing of the pattern. Definitely always double check, especially when it comes to the amount of ease and the style of the pattern as well. Whether it's the actual pattern that you buy in an envelope, whether it's the pattern in the magazine, always, always double check, which brings me to the next point and that is to make a muslin. Now muslin is also often called a toile, a mock-up, a test garment, but whatever you want to call it, the intent of muslin is to make a trial version before you proceed with the actual fabric that you have selected for this project. It also helps you to identify any areas that need adjustment, whether you need to take it in, let it out, maybe you need to reposition the dart, maybe you need to make a full bust adjustment or anything else like that. And it also helps you to identify whether the style will fit you or not. So definitely always, if not sure, before you proceed with your good fabric, make a mock-up or a test garment first. Measure twice, cut once, right? And I know that it sounds like a lot of work making a muslin, but that will pay off in so many ways. Now fabric. Fabric is one of the main materials that we talk about when it comes to sewing and it can also largely either make or break your garment, which can be a little bit frustrating especially when you're just beginning to sew or when you are moving from one type of garment to another type of garment or between two different constructions. And it can get a little bit confusing because the variety of fabrics out there nowadays is just overwhelming. When you're choosing the fabric for your project, you mainly have to look at the construction of the pattern. Does it require any stretch? Does it require any drape? Is it tight fitting? Is it loose fitting? What is the style of the garment? And that will give you the biggest hint of what kind of fabric do you need. You can also find a lot of clues online and a lot of tables that will also describe what kind of fabric is good for what project. And if you are shopping online for your fabric, nowadays shops do a fantastic job at actually mentioning what this fabric would be great and what kind of project it would look good in. And you know, and sometimes you just have to let the fabric do the talking and I guarantee that over time, once you get a little bit more experience, you will get that, you know, almost a gut feeling when you see the fabric, you touch it and you automatically know that, oh my God, it's going to make a beautiful top or wow, this is going to make a killer pair of pants. Much like with this fabric, I walked into Joanne's red tag section, I was looking for a fabric for a pretty flowy top and I saw this, I touched it and I was like, that's it, this is the winner. So 
it will take a little bit of experience, but fabric definitely makes for a beautiful and good looking garment. Here's another really good step that will be a game changer to your sewing, but it does take a little bit of a habit to get used to, and that is to learn from your mistakes. And I know it is super discouraging when you're just at the finishing line, something went wrong and your whole project is ruined. Oh! <laughs> it is as bad as it can get. However, take a few breaths, take a few steps back, leave it for the evening, turn up the light, go to sleep the next morning, do analyze what went wrong. I know it still might be painful, so maybe not the next morning, maybe take a few days, but do go back to that project to see what went wrong, where did it go wrong, and what can you do better for the next time? Because if you do not analyze your mistakes, chances are you might be repeating them over and over and over again. And remember, Einstein said that a person who has never made any mistakes has never tried anything new. So, it is just a way of learning Okay, so maybe this is not the most popular opinion out there, but I truly believe that the insides of the garment do matter and that the inside of the garment should look just as good as the outside of the garment. And the phrase just as good maybe is not the most descriptive out there because there are a variety of finishing techniques that you can use for the insides to look good as well, like Hong Kong seams, you can use French seams, you can use serger, you can use zigzag, you can use a variety of techniques. However, the point that I am always guided by is that if my garment by the wind, by me falling awkwardly on the street or anything else like that happens to turn wrong side out, I don't want to be ashamed. I want it to look good and I want to be proud of what I made. Also, well done insides of the garment is the structure of the whole piece. So the better you do it, the better your piece is going to hold up over the years and over the wear and tear, washing and everything else. So the insides of the garment definitely matter. So don't skip the step of making sure that the insides of the garment are well finished. While I'm holding this piece in my hand, let's move on to the next step, which is I always, always, always in the process of me making a garment or any other project, I do make sure that I put shoulder seam to shoulder seam and compare to make sure that the right side equals the left side, that the sleeves are even, that nothing is longer or shorter. Because in the process of sewing, quite a few things can happen. You can snip something accidentally, you can stretch out something with an iron, you can do quite a few things that might result in something being asymmetric, not as intended. So I definitely make sure that everything is just as it needs to be in the process of sewing before I do the final hem and the finishing touches. And of course, the more precise is the construction of the piece, the better the garment looks as a finished item when you're wearing it. One of the principles that I am a huge fan of that I follow every single time is that rules are there and they're meant to be broken, but in order to break the rule, you must know the rule first. And a lot of times people think that sewing is done just strictly by the book, which is not necessarily the case. If you look at the biggest names in a fashion design and sewing, a lot of times they go against the rules altogether. And there are the innovators who make this world more beautiful and who bring some great ideas into the sewing and design. So really, rules are there to be broken, but you must know the rule before you break it. So if you are just starting to sew, learn the principles, the basics of sewing, how to do a stitch, what is the construction, why does it matter, why is this done this way and this is done this way. And after you know the basic principles, then you can break the rules. Because if you don't know anything, it's really hard to understand what is right, what is wrong, and what are the things that must be present no matter how against the rules you want to go. So when you do innovate and you do get creative, you step outside of the box, one of the biggest challenges that I see people face is how to make sure that your project or your garment doesn't look sloppy. And that's, I think, where the intent comes in play. If your garment looks like it's intended to be this way, when the fabric is right, when the construction is great, when it looks polished and crisp and well-made, that's when it looks like it's intended to be this way and it doesn't look sloppy anymore. 
This is the principle that also digs a little bit deeper into our habits that revolve around sewing. And I used to do that, especially in the early days, but I don't do that anymore because it never ends well. And it is just not worth the nerves that go into that. And that is sewing in a rush, especially when it's the evening or the night before the big event. And you think, oh my God, how awesome would that be if I wear something handmade? Not a good idea. Definitely not a good idea. Just stick to what you already have planned to wear for that evening or for that morning and leave sewing for a more relaxing time when you can really focus on what you're doing because I'm telling you, sewing in a rush, especially when you are on a time crunch, never a good idea. And believe me, I'm usually the person who does really well under stress, so definitely not worth it extra sewing principle or step that you can do in order for your garment to turn out really well is to do hand basting. It works magic. It does take a little extra time, but it really does pay off, especially when you will notice that when you're pinning uh, fabric together, it usually distorts the fabric just a tiny bit, right? Because obviously pins take a little space and then when you hook them underneath, it creates kind of a little crater. So when you do the hand basting, it actually eliminates all of that especially when you really want to achieve a beautiful and precise top stitching. So definitely don't overlook hand basting as another step of really making your garment look top notch. And of course, there are many more other steps or principles that you can take in order to make sure that your garments look fantastic and that you're proud of them. If you do have one of those that you use on a daily basis, please let me know about them in the comments below. I would love to read what you guys have to say. But other than that, I do think that these are a good set of sewing principles that you can start using right now in order to really make a difference in your sewing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.